This is an unsolved serial killer case that since the 1990s has had the name The Package Killer due to the ways the bodies were disposed of. So the first confirmed murder was on the 26th of March 1919. 18-year-old Robin J. Meehan's body was found along highway. She had been stuffed between two mattresses in Silex, Missouri. The mattress corners were tied with Konex cable, which is something used by electricians. Also, dog hairs and candle wax were found on her body. She had been strangled with her hands tied together and a stab wound to the head. Robin had been missing for four days. Robin grew up in Tower Grove East and then Bevo. Sandra, her mother, a healthcare worker, said that her daughter lit up the room when she walked in and everyone who met her liked her. In high school, she was in the Reserve Officers Training Corps program and later she went to beauty school. Unfortunately, teenage Robin and her older brother Tom got caught up in the crack cocaine epidemic in the 80s which from there she became an escort to support her drug habit. She had a child at 16 and then another at 17, which was to be adopted. Clearly at this stage of Robin's life had taken a serious downturn. After her second child was born in the March of 1990, Robin was reported missing on the 22nd of March. And it was four days later her body was found. Although as an escort, Robin would normally operate from a house that ran the escort service in Shaw neighbourhood because it was safer than walking the streets. But on that day, Robin wasn't getting any calls from any customers. So Robin and a friend, Faye, left the house in Shaw to look for customers on the stroll. They had parked on Texas which is a block from Jefferson, next to Fortune Teller Bar. When Robin got a customer, Faye sat in the car and as a security measure, the usual thing to do was make the customer circle the block so that the other could get a good look at the driver in the car, just as a backup safety measure. Unfortunately, the car didn't drive back around the block and unbeknownst to Faye, that was the last time anyone saw Robin alive. Tom, Robin's brother, thought that she might have got in the car with someone to go and party after working at the Southside Stroll at a red light district in South City. And the fact down to their lifestyle at the time, it wouldn't have been out of the ordinary. Police told Sandra, Robin's mum, that they had found a candle wax at a suspect's apartment. And although St. Louis police were ready to make an arrest, they couldn't because Robin had been found in Silex, Missouri, which meant that it was up to Lincoln County's prosecuting office to bring the charges. Overall, they didn't end up arresting the suspect. Sandra was quoted in an article, if you have enough evidence on him, what does it matter what county it's in? But apart from the candle wax being at the apartment and matching candle wax on Robin's body, I couldn't really find out why else this man was made suspect. Six or seven months later, on October morning, 1990, a man who was jogging along Baston Drive, which is in Maryland Heights, noticed a strong odour. It was so potent that he notified the workers who were cutting back weeds. The three of them went and managed to follow the smell and came across a 35 gallon plastic bin which had no lid but was covered in rubbish bags that had been secured with wire. When the municipal workers tried to empty the load they found it was far heavier than it should be. When they had a proper look inside they discovered a decomposed body. The victim was a woman somewhere between 18 to 40 wearing a turquoise sweater with her hands bound with a man's shirt wrapped around her head. It was determined that the woman had died of asphyxiation. Where the bin had been originally placed by the concrete wall were the words written in graffiti, Sorry Kim. The police connected this crime to the case of Robin Meehan 
and it took 21 weeks to identify the Maryland Heights Jane Doe. She was 27 year old Brenda Jean Pruitt. She was reported missing nine months earlier by her family. Though she hadn't worked the streets, her fingerprints had been matched from a previous fingerprint file for minor offences. On February 17, 1991, a security guard who worked at the General Motors plant in Wentzville was on his way to work and was driving on the I-70 going through O'Fallon, Missouri. He noticed a box on the side of the highway and it caught the security guard's eye as it looked very out of place and it also the box looked handmade so he stopped and picked it up and placed it in the back of his truck. It was as he was driving along he noticed a bad smell and when he finally got to work the box was leaking fluid. The police were called and found a decomposed body of Sandy Little. She was still wearing the uniform of the fast food restaurant where she worked. She had been abducted after work, but it isn't clear as to whether she was walking home or walking along the stroll when she was abducted. Sandy had been missing from September 1990 until February 1991. She had a boyfriend, Chris Day, and two children. Although she worked at a fast food place, Sandy would also pick up customers from the stroll to support her drug habit that she had from a teenager daily and fund daily expenses. The childhood she had grown up was one that would be chaotic, abusive, with lack of parenting, especially from her mother, and in and out of foster care due to her mother's incapabilities as a parent. However, it seems 21-year-old Sandy was incredibly protective of her siblings probably because they only had each other to rely on. It was August when Barb Stutt, Sandy's stepsister, saw her walking the stroll. She asked Sandy what she was doing and Sandy replied that she needed money to buy formula. On the 4th of September, Sandy's boyfriend's mother reported her missing and it was five months later on the February 1991 when Sandy would be identified after a decomposed body was found in the box on the side of the highway. A piece of evidence found with Sandy's body was a cap with a logo stitched onto it for Tika Title, the title insurance firm. It definitely wasn't the sort of thing Sandy would have worn, so it must have been the killers. The hat was tested for DNA, but to no avail. For 30 or so years, this has baffled the police and although there are probably other murders that could be linked to these cases, as there are other missing women in the area that hadn't been found, and apart from the suspect they had from Robin Meehan's case, with a candle wax at both suspect's apartment and Robin's body, there really is nothing else, and so remains a cold case. There was another suspect who also kidnapped another lady who escaped, who had a dog and was on the highway I-70 at the time Sandy would have been dumped in a box but it seems there wasn't enough evidence and merely circumstantial so no arrests have ever been made and as for the men who were known to be particularly violent with women mainly sex workers in the area you could take your pick I hope one day with today's technology and DNA testing advancement this case would be solved Please like and subscribe for more content.